Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about key rate shifts, or you could also call them as partial not ones. Now, before we talk about key rate shifts, it's quite important to understand one of the major weaknesses when we talk about single factor approaches. So remember, when we were talking about DVO once, in other words, a change in a portfolio's value due to a one basis point shift in the interest rates. Now, it, this could be change in spot interest rates, change in forward interest rates, um, or even change in the par yield. So, at, for, for this video, we'll assume that we are talking about, when we talk about interest rates, let's assume that we are talking about spot interest rates. Now, when we were talking about DVO once, what we said was that DVO one basically means the change, the, the, the dollar value of a change in a portfolio's value due to one basis point shift in the interest rate curve. Now, when we were talking about DVO once, one of the biggest assumptions is that the whole curve goes through a parallel shift. So as you can see here in this diagram, when we talk about parallel shifts, what we are saying is the short short antennas so for example the one month three month and the long antennas it can be 30 year 40 year 50 year and even the medium term tenors such as seven year 10 year 12 year they all go through a parallel shift so in other words we apply a one basis point shift across all the tenors and then we calculate the dvo one but as you can imagine in reality the whole interest rate curve hardly go through a parallel shift normally the shifts are non-parallel in other words the the short-term tenors behave very differently compared to the long-term tenors and also the medium-term tenors in other words each category or each group of the of, of an interest rate curve you know the short-term tenors the medium-term tenors the long-term tenors etc they all behave in very different ways so what this means is one of the major disadvantages or major weaknesses of a single factor approach. So when we talk about single factor, what we are saying is basically we are applying one parallel shift across the whole interest rate curve. So that's what we mean by a single factor. We are not breaking the interest rate curve into various groups. So we are assuming the whole interest rate curve goes through or behaves in the same way which is not true so one of the biggest weaknesses of a single factor approach is that if you set up a hedge to protect your portfolio let's assume a, a particular bond portfolio if you set up a hedge to protect a bond portfolio from some of the adverse movements you might incur unexpected losses because your hedge will only be effective if the whole interest rate curve goes through a parallel shift but as we said in reality it never goes through a parallel shift and this is where a model where we can use key rates becomes very important so what do we mean by key rates now when we talk about key rates basically what we are saying is that if you take an interest rate curve so here what we have done is we have broken down the interest rate curve into three groups so the short term tenors so this can be tenors such as one year two year even nine months one and a half years etc we are grouping those tenors into one key rate saying two year key rate in other words what we are saying is all these short term tenors behave up to two years behave in a similar fashion and then all the rates closer to five years what we are saying we, this could be kind of medium term tenors we are saying they all behave in a similar fashion and long term tenors such as 10 year and beyond we are saying they behave in a very different manner so here in this example we have three different key rates the first key rate is two years the second key rate is five years and the third key rate is 10 years now this is a very simplified example but if you look 
into in a financial institution a typical bank we could have key rates for example about 10 different key rates or sometimes even 15 different key rates you can imagine the more key rates you have your hedge will be more effective but this is a very simplified example and you don't have to have a two-year key rate five year ten year you could have three years seven years 15 years it depends on firm to firm it all depends on how they see the interest rates move and some of the some of their hedge policies and profiles etc so that's something to remember now the other important thing to note is that the total of each of these shifts across for each tenor the total will add up to one basis point so that's an important thing to remember the total of each of these shifts should add up to one basis point so what that means is that any tenor that's less than the shortest key rate so in this case the two-year key rate so any tenors that's less than the two-year tenor including the two-year tenor we will apply a parallel one basis point shift and any tenors that's greater than the long the largest key rate so in this case 10 year so including the 10 year if you see we apply one basis point and all the other tenors in between we interpolate them so that we can when we add across each key rate for a single tenor we'll arrive at one basis point now I'll, I'll show you how to interpolate this as we go on and as you can see here for the five year shift the exactly the five year tenor we apply a one basis point you can see here it's one basis point and then it's basically it's a linear interpolation as we come to the other tenors and you can see when it comes to the two year tenor the five year shifts becomes zero so that's what you can see here if you look at the two year two year tenor the five year shifts doesn't have any impact and that's because we are we have one basis point here so that the remember the total of each tenor will equal to one basis point so that's something to remember as well so remember here this is a simple term when we talk about key rate so here we are saying key rate due to the key rate exposure so here your key rate exposure is basically relating to the two-year tenor so that's what we have put to here what this means is the reduction in a portfolio's value from a one basis point increase in the two-year spot rate so let's look at a simple example so here what we have is we have a bond and this bond has 10 years to maturity and in each year you're receiving a $10 cash flow and at maturity you receive the notional $100 and the $10 and let's assume the interest rate is at 5% it's flat at 5% so if you discount each of these cash flows applying the 5% interest rate your bond price will be $137.39 and then what we are doing is we are applying a parallel shift to the interest rate curve so we are applying a one basis point upward shift so remember we are not applying key rates so here we are simply applying a one basis point shift across all the tenors you can see we are applying a one basis point shift across all the tenors at the same time so when we do this the PV we get is $137.29 so which means our DVO1 remember DVO1 means the change in the dollar value due to one basis point shift so our DVO1 is 9 cents so the reason we have negative 9 is that remember normally a uh, coupon bond the price and the interest rate has a negative relationship so here the interest rate increases by one basis point and the price drops by nine cents and that's the reason we have a minus sign so you can see when we apply the a parallel shift of one basis point increase 
the price of the bond drops by 9 cents. Now what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the key rates, the key rate exposure. So here what we have done is we are assuming each of the years is, a, is an individual key rate. So we have 10 different key rates and we have just put the bond cash flows here. Remember the bond gives us $10 each year and at maturity we get $110 principal plus the final interest. So here we are calculating the key rate exposures. Now what we have done here is we are only shifting. So when we calculate the one year key rate exposure what we do is we only shift the one year interest rate by one basis point and we keep all the others unchanged. We keep all the others unchanged. And you can see the key rate exposure is very small. And then we calculate the two year key rate exposure. So when we calculate the two year key rate exposure, what we do is we just shift only the two year interest rate by one basis point and we keep all the other interest rates unchanged. So if we do that, you can see the exposure is very small. So you can see the only large exposure we have is when we move the 10 year tenor. The price of the bond drops by 6 cents. And if we add all these key rate exposures, so that's why we are saying here sum of key rate shift. If we add all the key rate exposures, we get 9 cents, which is exactly the same as DBO1. So now the, now the reason these two are the same, remember when we were talking about key rates, we said the way we set up the key rates is in a way that the sum of the key rate shifts for each tenor will be one basis point. So that's a principle that you need to remember. When we set up the key rates, we set it up in a way that the sum of the key rate shifts for each tenor or each maturity will be one basis point. So now let's look at how to calculate the shifts between these points. Now remember we said that when we were talking about the key rates that the addition of each shift for a particular tenor should be one basis point. Now what that means is that any tenors that's less than the shortest key rate, so in this case two year and below, should be one basis point. Now the reason for that is that the five year shift or the ten year shift will not come beyond this point you can see here. So the five year shift has to become zero when it reaches two years because this two year is another key rate. So it has to become zero when it reaches two years. It also, the five year shift also has to become zero when it reaches 10 years because 10 years is another key rate. So it will, it will be one basis point at five. You can see one basis point at five, but it has to become zero when it reaches the other key rate, which is two years and 10 years. So but basically what we are saying is that the five year shift has no impact beyond any tenors for less than or including two years and any tenors more than 10 years including 10 years so it has to become zero when it reaches 10 years so we know that this is one so that's what we have put this is one and we need to use linear interpolation to calculate the other tenors the same thing with the two year shift you can see any tenors that's less than including two years is one basis point remember because then we, when we add them we, we need to have one so it's quite easy and any tenors that's more than the 10 year, which is the longest key rate shift, any, anything beyond the 10 year is also one basis point. So it's all one. So that's when we add them, it becomes one. So now in order for you to calculate in this example, tenor three and tenor four, if you think about it, you have three tenors. So you have Tenor 3, tenor 4, and you know that you need to become 0 at tenor 5. Remember, 
if you take the two year key rate which is this one the two year key rate shift has to become zero at ten of five so you have three three tenors one two three so what you do is you apply one third so from zero it increases by one third which is not point three three and then it, it increases by another one third which is not point six six and that's the way so basically you apply a linear interpolation now in this example here so you have the five year shift is one basis point which we know and you have three tenors before it becomes zero so so after five you have the four year tenor four year tenor you have the three year tenor and at the two year tenor it has to become zero so again you apply one third so that's what from zero if you increase by one third you have 0 0.33 and then if you increase by one third again you have 0 0.66 and if you increase by one third you arrive at one now the same way if you look at these tenors so you know that you had the five year tenor and you need to be zero at the 10 year tenor so which means you have five tenors including including the 10 year tenor see one two three four four and five you have five tenors you have five tenors between five and ten year and you need to become zero at the tenth year tenor so which means you apply one over five to each tenor and which is not point two so that's what you can see from not you're increasing not point two not point four not point six not point eight so basically you divide it by five different parts and you apply a linear interpolation and that's the same application here as well you have five tenors between 10 and 5 and you need to become zero at the fifth tenor so you decrease by one fifth between each tenor so, so you know you have 0 0.8 0 0.6 0 0.4 and 0 0.2 so that's something to remember now remember like i said in this example i have we have simplified it into three key rates you will you don't have to have three key rates you can have two key rates you can have five key rates but we said that in a typical financial institution you would normally have anything between 8 10 or even 15 different key rates so that's an important thing to remember now in our next video we will talk about how to use key rate shifts in order to hedge a particular portfolio so I hope you understood and have a look at this because for some this might be a slightly complex area uh, and it might take some time to understand the basics. And if you have any questions, uh, post it in the comment section or drop us an email and we can have a look. Thanks a lot.